Good evening, guys. Hope you've had a great day. Liv's just getting ready. As usual, this is a pay what you can lesson, so there will be a link in the description if you can donate anything at the end. Otherwise, enjoy the class and have a great evening. Good boy. Good boy. Good evening, guys. Thanks for joining me. Um, as I'm sure you've all seen, uh, this is a nice slow flow class, so um, nice and stretchy nothing too um, strenuous. I don't know if anybody saw the messages that I put out on my Instagram or to WhatsApp groups. Um, if you have a yoga strap or something that enables you to sort of form a lasso, that's gonna be really helpful for this class, but don't worry if you don't, um, I'll be offering options for not using it. Uh, and apologies if I look a little bit like a strawberry. I've just got back from a run and my face will not cool down. So let's start in my favorite position, lying down flat on your back. The easiest one, my favorite one to start. Let your arms rest alongside your body. Just let your legs go nice and floppy. And give yourself a moment to find stillness here. Taking a few nice deep breaths and just feeling your body slow down to settle and to become still. Focusing your attention to your body and your breath. And just watching that soft rise and fall of your chest and the soft in and out of the belly as you breathe. Trying to find a little extra softness throughout the body with each and every breath out. Maybe you can just relax the forehead or the jaw a little. You can find a little more softness across the belly or into the hands and the feet. Just really feel like your body is melting down into the mat. And then maintaining that softness within the body, start to find a little bit more energy within the breath. So taking a deeper, slower breath in and then matching that on the way out, all the way to the bottom. Allow this breath to really focus your mind, allowing no room for distractions in your thoughts. A good way to keep your brain focused is to imagine that your breath is a cloud of air that you can see. Watch it travel in through the nose, down the back of the throat, into the lungs, and watch your lungs grow bigger. And as you breathe out, feel those lungs shrink down. Watch that breath go back up the back of the throat, out through the nose, and into the air around you. Trying to hold on to this calm breath, this soft breath, throughout the rest of the class allowing your mind these next 45-ish minutes to really let go and just allow your eyes to blink open if you have them shut and stepping your feet a little closer together to find a long line between the crown of your head and your toes let your right knee draw in towards your chest and give it a nice tight squeeze we're keeping the back of the left leg solidly down against the floor. So that leg has to do a little work as well. And finding some strength in the arms to really draw this top leg close in towards the body. And you can find a few little wiggles with the leg if you like, tiny little circles or rocks backwards and forwards, just loosening in to that hip. And then switching sides, send that right leg all the way back out, drawing your left knee in, Give it a nice tight squeeze, maybe a circle or a wiggle if you like, otherwise just hold it nice and firm, close in towards the body and root down heavily through that right thigh. And then releasing that, grow tall, reach your arms up above your head, point through your toes, full body stretch. And as you breathe out, draw your knees in towards your body. Make yourself into a small little ball. You can keep your shoulders and head down on the floor, but really compress your legs in towards your body. 
You're then going to open your knees nice and wide. Let your feet come back down to the floor, so a nice diamond shape with the legs. Let the thighs feel heavy as they fall away from each other. And you can rest your hands onto your inner thighs if you like, and if that doesn't feel too intense. Or you can just release your hands by your sides and allow gravity to help you open up into the hips. A nice deep breath in. And a slow breath out. Just one more, breathing in. And breathing out. Great, guiding the knees back together. And this is where we're going to want to use our straps. So grab your strap or scarf or tie or whatever it is that you might be able to be to use at home if you don't have a specific yoga strap. Mine is actually a black belt. You're going to curl that right knee back in towards your chest, but leave your left leg bent to begin with. We're hooking the strap around the ball of the foot. So make sure you're not around the arch of your foot. You want to be around the ball so that the strap is going to help keep your foot flexed. The strap, we're going to hold as close to our foot as we can, and the arm is on the inside of this right thigh. Then take a nice deep breath as you press your heel to the sky and if you need to, to straighten the leg, let your hand slide down the strap. So we're aiming for a straight leg but we're also aiming to keep the right shoulder pinned against the floor. So give yourself as much strap as you need but make sure you're not doing something sort of like this. Know that you've got more strength, you've got more length in your hamstring than that. That's why we start the hand close to the foot and then push the heel away and just allow the strap to slide. If you don't have a strap and reaching the toe is too challenging for your hamstrings, you can hold the back of the thigh close to your body and push the heel to the sky just like this. So lots of different options to play with there. If you've got quite long hamstrings, you can try sliding your left leg out straight onto the mat. But if you do that and the leg becomes sort of floppy in midair, then you're better to stay with it bent with the foot onto the floor. So obviously we should be feeling this along the back of the right thigh into that hamstring. Keep that heel pushing towards the sky as the toes pull down towards the face. Using a little bit of strength in this right arm just to keep encouraging the leg to come that little bit closer to the body. And then I want you to switch, if you're holding the strap, the foot, whatever it is you're holding, switch your hands. So you're now gonna hold the strap with your left hand. I want you to take your right hand and put your thumb into your hip crease and you're going to imagine you're pushing that hip towards the foot end of your mat. Now keep that hip pushing that way and ever so slightly let your leg pull slightly over towards the left. It's really not going far at all. This isn't a twist, we're keeping the body facing the sky and this right sit bone, the right side of the pelvis is driving down towards the front of your mat. You should feel this in your IT band, the outside of your right leg, maybe a little bit into your outer hip as well. Just a short hold here, take one more breath and then draw yourself back towards the center. So keeping this leg in the sky, re-switch the hands, right hand to hold your strap or to hold your toe, holding whatever it is that you've got. Keep the toes flexed. This time we're going in the other direction. Place your left hand onto your left hip or thigh and help keep that left side down, gently drawing that right foot out to one side, keeping your chest and your belly facing upwards, don't turn the torso. If you have a bent left leg, let your knee fall out in the opposite direction as a little bit of a counterbalance. The heel pushes away from you, the toes pull back towards the face, and you have to use a little bit more strength in your arm in this variation to keep pulling that leg out to one side as well as up towards the head. Breathing in. And then using strength, draw that leg all the way back to the sky. Now, last one here, keeping this leg up, that hamstring's really getting its work here. Take both hands onto your strap or your foot and then curl your shoulders off of the mat. Think of chin towards chest and forehead towards knee, but obviously doesn't need to be anywhere near the knee. Press your lower back down and take a nice deep breath in. As you breathe out, release it, release the strap, let it go. Place that foot back down, maybe just give it a little jiggle, a little wiggle, before we move to the other side. So your left knee first, pull it in towards the body, give it a nice squeeze, keep the right leg bent to begin with. 
and then taking your strap or prop of choice and round the ball of the foot, holding it with the left hand, the arm is on the inside of the thigh. Shoulders stay down against the floor and then press the heel towards the sky, giving yourself as much strap as you need to, to get that leg straight up to the ceiling. Left shoulder stays pinned down against the mat. And same option as before, you can choose to try to extend the right leg if you're not challenged enough by what you've taken. And if you don't have a prop, hold the back of the thigh in and press that heel to the sky. Think of the back of the thigh pushing towards the front of the mat. And your left shoulder to stay firmly grounded so that we're not allowing the torso, or not really allowing the foot to pull the torso away from the floor. Take one more breath in. And then breathing out, switch your hands. Wherever it is you're holding, hold now with your right. Take your thumb of this left hand, place it into the hip crease and push away from you. So it's your left sit bone is pushing towards the front of the mat. You can probably already feel that more into your hamstring, that's no problem. But then let this leg come slightly over towards the right. It really only needs to be a couple of centimeters. Doesn't have to go far to send that feeling into the outer of the left hip, left thigh. Making sure we're trying to stay nice and steady with the breath, soft in the face. Great, draw your leg back to the center. Re-switch the hands. Left hand is gonna hold onto the foot. You probably need to give yourself a little bit more strap as you go to the side. But again, as before, as we go off this left side, try not to let your leg go down and give yourself so much strap that you're taking this outer hip rotation out of it. So the leg goes to one side, keep it as high up as you can. You can counterbalance by letting your right knee fall out towards the right. Maybe you've found yourself a bit of furniture or a sofa off to that side and it's quite comfortable to let your leg rest onto it. Keep pressing away through that heel, drawing back through the toes, focusing a little bit more strength into this left arm to keep the leg nice and active. Inhale, and then exhale, nice and strong, draw the leg back up to the center. Both hands to hold onto the strap or the foot, whatever it is you're holding, and just for a moment, curl those shoulders up, chin towards chest, lower back pressing down, nice and strong through your core, thinking of drawing your forehead towards your knee. Inhale, holding. And then exhale, releasing everything. You can pop your strop, strop, strops, straps off to one side. We are done with those for the moment. So staying lying on your back, we're going to reach our arms towards the sky and stack our knees on top of our hips and our ankles in line with those knees. So lots of right angles going on. We're focusing on sinking the lower back down into the floor. And you can choose to hold this, this stationary. If this is challenging, you can even think of moving your toes slightly away from you to make it harder. Otherwise, we're gonna find some movement that's really gonna challenge our coordination. Your right arm is going overhead as your left leg reaches forwards. Don't let anything touch the floor and then draw everything back to the center. Then we switch side, left arm overhead, right toes reach forwards, lower back stays down, coming back to the center. So the better, it's better to move nice and slowly here as we focus on finding strength through our core. And you can make things more challenging by reaching the leg a little bit closer to the floor. And you can make things a little easier by thinking of kicking to the ceiling instead of to the floor. So the lower the leg, the more challenging that's going to be. So work at a level that feels challenging for you as you move from one side to the other. Just do a couple more here. They're called dead bugs. Good, last one. Reach it out, I'm sure you can feel your core working here. And then curl your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze. Give those tummy muscles a moment just to recover and to relax. And then nice and gently rolling your way up into a seated position. You can turn yourself around and come up a different way if you prefer. So coming into cross legs, and I want to start with the right shin in front, sitting yourself as tall as you can. So think about stacking your ribs on top of your pelvis and your chest to be nice and broad. If you want to make cross legs a little bit more challenging, wiggle your feet left and right and move your shins slightly away from each other. 
Take a nice deep breath in. Circle your arms wide, turn your palms to face forwards. And then as you exhale, let your hands come to rest onto the floor in front of you. Doesn't matter how far away they go, keep your sit bones onto the floor and drop your chin towards your chest as you feel your body weight tip forwards towards your shins. Each breath you take, feel your body growing that little bit larger as you expand into your lungs. Breathing out to keep allowing the body to fold. And then one more, breathing in. Breathing out, walk the hands back in so you're sat up nice and tall. With your left arm, take a deep breath in, circle the arm up and over, take a big back stroke. As you rest that hand onto the floor behind you, your right hand then comes to the outer of that left knee to give it a little pull or a press so that you can deepen into the twist as you look over your left shoulder. Each breath in tries to lengthen the spine a little taller and each breath out, drawing the belly in towards your spine to allow your body to rotate. Take one more breath in. And then staying twisted as you are, you're gonna kick your right leg out straight. From there, reaching through those right toes, take a deep breath in, see if you can lift your bum off of the mat. The right arm goes to the sky as you find lots of length in this top right side of the body using strength in that left knee, that left leg, to keep your hips lifted, maybe even take your gaze to your top hand. Inhale. And exhale. Good, slowly bring your hips all the way back down to the mat. Turn your body towards your extended right leg. As you breathe in, you're gonna find that length again in your torso, so we're just trying to take away any sort of compression. And as you exhale, let your hands come to rest either side of the leg. Maybe your arms are long enough to find your toes. You could hold your leg. Just a nice lean forwards of the body weight towards this right side, finding that length in the back of this right leg. Seeing as we might already have a strap with us, if the foot is not quite within our reach, we can always hook the strap around the ball of the foot, just like we did on our back, and keep the tension there by holding the strap instead. Trying to prioritize keeping the lower back nice and long. And finding softness in the body, trying to encourage that hamstring to release as we go. Breathing in. And then breathing out, releasing, drawing that leg back in, switching across the leg. So your left shin will now be the one in front. And again, if you wanted to intensify this stretch, wiggle your feet away from each other and move your shin slightly forwards. Breathing in, circle the arms wide, palms face forwards. Really lift your fingertips towards the sky. Breathing out, send that length forwards. Hands onto the mat in front of you. The head dangles in front as you feel your body weight tip towards your shins. Take a nice deep breath in. And breathing out, the hands walk back in. Find that nice tall spine to begin with and then the right hand back stroke as you breathe in all the way up and over. Place that hand onto the floor behind you as you twist and look over your right shoulder. Your left hand then onto the outside of your left knee. Alexa is always interrupting my classes. Take your gaze over the shoulder and either press or pull as much as you like onto that knee to help your body rotate. Breathing in, breathing out. Great, you're then gonna stay twisted off to one side, your left leg, kick it out just off the side of the mat, so it's a bit of a diagonal across you. The right hand stays behind you, push down through the hand, push down through this knee, lift your bum from the floor, even if it's just a couple of centimeters, see if you can find some lift here. The right, the left hand, excuse me, reaches to the sky. Option to take your gaze with it. And find that length in this top left side of the body and really focus your breath there. Breathing in. And then use your breath out. Let your bum softly come back to the floor. Come back to face center. Turn yourself slightly more towards your left leg. Option to use your strap as before. 
and then breathing in, lengthen towards the sky. Breathing out to send that length towards your toes. Hands to rest either onto the leg, either side of the calf. Maybe you can hold the toes or you can use your strap. Gently encourage the back of the thigh down towards the floor. Maintaining that length in your lower back, thinking of drawing your belly button up and out of the bowl of your pelvis. Take a nice deep breath in. And breathing all the way out. Great, releasing that. Drawing the leg back in so that you're into cross legs. And as before, adjust if you'd like to make it more challenging. This time we're going to focus a little more into the upper body. So we're going to wrap our right arm on top of our left, trying to get as deep across as possible, ideally above the elbows, and then either the backs of the hands to come to meet, or maybe you can double wrap and the palms to meet. So this is eagle arms. If you have this here, think of reaching your fingertips to the sky as your elbows push away from you. If this wrap isn't possible within your body, give yourself a big hug instead with the right arm on top, thinking of fingertips reaching towards your shoulder blades. You should feel that broadness across your upper back. That's where we're stretching into. Think of those fingertips keep reaching taller and breathe in. A breathing out. Last one, breathing in. And then releasing, let your elbows drop taking your hands behind you, your fingertips to point backwards. As you take a deep breath in, puff your chest to the sky. So it's almost the opposite stretch. We're really opening the front of the body, stretching between the heads of the shoulders and lift your chin away from your chest. So you find that nice deep sort of puff forwards. As you release, you're gonna to come to the other side, left arm on top of right, nice deep cross of the arms. Give yourself a hug if you're struggling with um, not getting above the elbows. Otherwise, backs of hands together, if you can, the palms to come together. It's then the fingertips that lift high, press the elbows away from you and broaden that space between your shoulder blades. Really think of focusing your breath into that, that part of your body. So as you inhale, imagine those shoulder blades growing further apart from one another. And exhale to remain soft, nice and long through your spine. One more, breathe in. And then breathing out, unravel those arms, take the hands back behind you, a nice deep breath in to puff your chest to the sky, shoulder blades squeeze together and think of your lib, lips, ribs lifting up towards the sky too. Releasing there as you exhale. One final stretch as we sit here. Inhale, arms circle to the sky. Exhale, right hand to the floor next to you. Let your body slightly lean across in that right direction. Roll the shoulder back as you gaze under that left armpit. Finding that length in the side body, breathe into that section. Use an inhale, draw yourself all the way back upright. Circle those arms back to the sky, find length. And on the exhale, left hand goes down. Keep that length, but send it off to one side. Roll the shoulder back, take the gaze under the arm. Breathing in. And then breathing out. Draw yourself upright, either turn the legs around or roll yourself over so that you're coming towards tabletop but we're not staying for long. We're going to tuck the toes under behind us, walk the hands back, lifting the knees, let your hips lift towards the sky, keep walking back until you find yourself into a ragdoll fold. So the knees are bent and the belly and thigh rest towards each other. The head is hanging freely in front of the legs and the arms are dangling, or you can cross them if that's more comfortable. Keeping your hips pushing towards the sky, but not at the expense of creating a larger gap between torso and legs. Keep them sandwiched together and just imagine your upper body is a big dead weight, really pulling you down towards the floor. And your hips are as light as a feather, floating up towards the sky, finding quite a lot of length in the back of the legs. Take a 
take a deep breath in. And then breathing out. Release your arms if you have them, uh, have them crossed. The left hand is going to stay onto the floor, perhaps onto a block to bring the floor a little bit further away, uh, a little bit closer, should I say. On the inhale, the right arm is going to the sky, turning your chest to face that top hand. Your left knee can bend a little deeper to help your body twist. And we're working that right leg towards straight. It doesn't have to be straight if that's not quite happening for us. Push the left fingertips down to help the torso turn, taking your gaze towards the top hand, thighs still press backwards. Inhale. And then exhale, hand comes down, switching sides. Right hand to the floor or to a block. Use the inhale, left arm to the sky. Let that right knee bend generously, finding as much length in the left leg as we can, turning the chest and the gaze Everything's turning to the sky. Holding here to breathe in. And then breathing out. Hand comes back to the floor. Walking our way forwards, let your knees come back down onto the mat as you find yourself into tabletop. From here, we're going straight into down dog. So the toes can stay tucked under. Knees lift, hips go high, thighs press back as we open the armpits wide. Now, hopefully your hamstrings are already feeling a little bit longer. So try to see if you can find a stationary down dog from the start without the need to pedal out. A soft bend in the knees, press your femur bones back into those hamstrings and lift your sit bones to the sky. Those shoulder blades stay broad across your back, just like they do with our eagle arms. Hold for one more nice deep breath in. And then breathing out, drop your knees back to the mat. Your hands should be out in front of you into a bit like an elongated tabletop. We're going to shift the weight slightly forwards towards those fingertips. Tailbone stays tucked, so imagine that your pelvis and your rib cage are sort of one solid unit. There's no sort of hinging going on between the two. Keep that solid unit as one, bend your elbows and let your body come down to the floor with as much control as you can. So really controlling your weight all the way down. Keep your feet about hip distance apart. Press the front of the pelvis into the mat. And as you inhale, lift your chest. Look forward as you squeeze your shoulder blades together. You can leave your hands down for a bit of support or maybe let your hands float so you're in baby cobra, working on finding lots of strength in the lower back. Breathing in. And breathing out. It's a challenging one. Take one more, breathe in and then releasing, breathe out. You can let your head rest onto the floor for a moment. I won't, because I don't want to squish my mic, but just try and let your body release out of that, softening into your lower back, softening into your bum muscles, and just letting all of that go. We're then gonna take the hands underneath the chest. Push your way up via your knees. Keep your knees relatively wide. You can step them a bit wider if you like. Big toes to come to touch, bum to go down towards your heels. Push it as low as you can as your arms stay out long. Forehead to rest onto the mat as you come down into child's pose. Taking a few nice deep breaths here, really filling those lungs, expanding into the torso and breathing out. And again, take a nice deep breath in and a slow breath out. Good, then walking your hands back in towards your knees. Let your knees come a little bit more narrow so they're back sort of hip distance apart. Tuck those toes and once again, you're gonna walk the hands back, lift the knees, lift the hips and come towards a ragdoll fold. Just for a moment here, just a couple of breaths. Allow yourself to keep pulling the body down towards the floor, lots of length in the back of the legs. And then hands are gonna to come to your waist. The knees to stay bent, the chin to the chest and slowly unraveling your way all the way up to stand, allowing yourself lots of time to unravel so you're finding yourself nice and tall eventually. And then keeping your feet about hip distance apart to give ourselves a bit of balance here. You might want to use your straps because we're coming to make the same shapes that we did with the straps on our back, but we're making it a little bit more challenging because we're gonna be stood on one leg. So I will use mine for a demonstration. So we're gonna stand onto the left leg 
and think of drawing the right knee high up towards our chest. If we don't have a strap and we don't want to work with the strap, you're just going to interlace your hands around the shin and draw that knee in towards you. Otherwise, you can take your strap and hook it around the ball of your foot. You're already using your balance to try and get that. Your right hand is gonna hold that strap and the arm is on the inside of the thigh and see if you can kick that heel away from you, keeping the shoulders aligned, so don't allow your right shoulder to be dragged forwards and don't be concerned with how straight the leg is. Just try to keep your torso upright as that heel pushes away from you. You can also do this by holding your toe and press your heel away, keeping the knee bent. And if you've got longer hamstrings, you can find a straight leg. Holding, breathe in, and then gently letting it go. See if you can place the foot down rather than dropping or falling, and then seeing if we can find the same on the other side. So your first option is to draw the left knee up and to simply squeeze it in. I say simply, you're still trying to balance on one leg whilst compressing the knee in towards the torso. Your second option to use the strap to hook around the ball of the foot or you can hold your toe. You can then press your heel away from you, keeping your chest tall, keeping your gaze at one point. If you have dogs or kids running around the room, this is gonna be in, in, infinitely harder. Keep pressing the heel back, draw the, chest, the left shoulder back in towards the chest. And don't forget to breathe. One more, inhale. As you exhale, gently with control, place that foot back down onto the mat. Good job if you fell. Try not to be frustrated. I'm not sure anyone um, balances well on their first attempts of that. Take a nice deep breath in. Send your arms to the sky, your gaze goes with them. And as you exhale, fold forwards, your fingertips to come to the mat. Dangle your head in front of your legs and get those hips nice and high back into the sky. Then walking those hands forwards, the knees lower down to the mat, the hips stay on top of the knees, and then the hands keep walking as we come into puppy pose. The forehead makes its way down onto the mat. The arms are extended out above us, and we're trying to leave just the palms down. So try to lift your elbows and your forearms but you can rest them down if it feels too intense in your shoulders to have them lifted. If you've got a little bit more to work with, you can stack those hands up onto fingertips. Keep your sit bones nice and high in the sky. Your chest sinking down towards the mat. And with each breath in, feel your body grow a little bit wider as if you're breathing into the left and the right sides of your lungs. Breathing out, stay nice and heavy, dropping the chest towards the mat. Breathing in. Breathing out. And then last one, breathing in. And with your breath out, just walk your hands a small distance back in towards you, just so you've got a little bit extra control. Your right hand is going to stay out at the top of the mat. The left hand threads underneath the armpit, the palm faces the sky. Let yourself come down onto the side of the shoulder, the side of the head. Give yourself a moment to get there. It's a bit of an awkward one to get into. The right arm is staying out at the top of the mat. We're pressing the side of the left shoulder down and imagining this right armpit is lifting up away from the floor. So imagine you're almost trying to roll over onto your back, but maintain your balance, press the shoulder down. Focus a nice deep breath down into the belly. Relaxing and softening the body as you breathe out. Again, breathing in. And breathing out. Lovely, use your right hand to push yourself back round and switching sides. Your left hand is gonna step forwards. Your right arm threads underneath the armpit. The palm faces upwards. Slowly let yourself come onto the side of the shoulder. The head rests down as well. And that left arm stays nice and long out towards the top of the mat. The left armpit is lifting away from the floor. And we're gently pressing the side of the right shoulder down against the mat. Take one more nice deep breath in. 
and then breathing out, use that left hand, push yourself all the way back round, your feet to go off to one side so you can sit down behind you, swing your legs out in front of you or find your own version of coming down to seated. So our legs are going to stay out straight in front of us. Feel like you want to just lightly roll your thighs inwards towards each other. That helps you sit a little bit taller on your sit bones, helps you keep that length in your lower spine. And if you, um, if you perhaps struggle in the hamstring department, you can either use a yoga block to go under your knees so it stops you forcing them straight or just use a cushion or a blanket to pad up under your knees to stop you sort of forcing the legs straight which causes the lower back to collapse down. So those options are there if you're struggling to find sort of an L shape with your body. We're going to take a nice deep breath in and draw the arms tall to the sky. Make that L shape even bigger. And as you exhale, send the length forwards. Just as before, your hands may be able to find your toes. You may be able to use the props that you have with you to flex the feet and hook the feet with the strap, keeping that length in your spine. Otherwise, just let your hands rest onto the floor, wherever it is they find, and give the backs of the thighs a gentle press down. Even if you have the support under the knees, you can still find that sinking feeling. Let your neck feel nice and loose, a little drop of the chin down towards the chest. And keeping that breath nice and steady, drawing it deep down towards the belly. And all the way back out. And then one more, breathing in. As you breathe out, walk your hands all the way back in. Let your right knee bend, leaving your foot just next to your knee. Um, no gap between leg and foot for this one. Right hand places behind us as we start to twist and look over the right shoulder. You can either stay here, holding the knee as you are to help keep it close to your body to twist, or perhaps you have the space to hook your elbow around the thigh, giving them a little press together to help your body rotate. Looking over that right shoulder, keeping your left leg the straight one, keep the heel pushing forward and the toes flexing back, just like when you're making that L shape when you're doing the hamstring stretch. Keep the back of the thigh rooting down as you turn your chest to the right. Inhale and exhale. Great, draw yourself back to centre. This top right leg, you're going to step it over to the other side, but we're going to come into a half cow face pose. So in cow face, we want the knees to kind of stack on top of one another. So the foot, I'm actually going to show you on the other side so you can see my foot. The foot comes all the way over, so the knees stack towards each other and the heel has come close to your hip. So it's as if you've got a nice deep bend in that knee. And he's doing a puppy pose. So nicely tight, nice tight draw in of the heel towards your hip. I'm not sure you can even see me anymore. From there, you might be happy staying here. And when I say happy, I mean you might be challenged. You might feel this into your outer hip. If you have a little bit more to play with here, you can let your body start to fold over this thigh and your hands to rest onto the mat in front of you. Keep your thighs gently drawing in towards each other as if you're squeezing your legs in. Each breath in is going to lengthen out your lower spine. And each breath out allows you to stay soft, to fold, compressing the body towards the leg. Great, last one, breathe in. Then breathing out. Draw yourself back upright, switching the legs, so right leg to extend, left leg to bend. First, we're going to put the foot about next to the kneecap, sitting yourself nice and tall. Hold on to that leg as you twist and look over your left shoulder. And use your left hand behind you for support and either staying here or hook the elbow around the thigh. As you twist a little deeper, thinking of your chest turning as well as your gaze. <laughs> Sorry if Benny is continually in the way today. Use your inhales to find a little extra height, a little extra length in your spine. And your exhales to keep turning.
Last one, inhale. And exhale to come back to center, taking this foot over to the other side. Think of your, um, so generally you have to sort of give the foot a little bit of a wiggle. Squeeze the thighs together. Think of the knees trying to stack together in the midline of your body. Heel towards bum. And then sit yourself nice and tall, find length. And then let yourself fold forwards as long as that's comfortable. Again, you can stay upright if it's already feeling, if you're already feeling the challenge into that left hip. You can also obviously feel this as a hamstring stretch because that right leg is extended out in front of you. Good, using a breath in, find length. And using a breath out, find softness. One more, breathing in. And breathing out to release, draw yourself upright and untangle your legs. Just make sure you have some space behind you to roll yourself down onto your back. Arms reach forwards, slowly unraveling the spine, tailbone is tucked, chin to the chest. Allow yourself to come back down all the way onto your back. Once you're there, step the knees in, give yourself a little squeeze, a little hug holding on to the back of the thighs, the front of the shins, thinking of compressing the legs nice and close in towards the body. Maybe a soft little rock from left to right, feeling your lower back squish down against the floor. You're then going to place your right foot onto the mat, across your left ankle over your right thigh, I hope you can see. <laughs> Your left knee can then move away from you. You can push it with your left hand, or you can interlace your hands around the back of your right thigh or the right shin, giving that a pull in as you keep that left knee moving away from you. A big stretch for the outer left hip. Keeping this top foot flexed to make sure that the knee stays happy and keep encouraging your lower back down onto the floor avoiding that um, backwards roll or shape. Great, breathe in and breathe out. And then this leg that we have on top, so the left leg, let it keep crossing over the thigh. So now you've squished your thighs together. Your knees are stacked in the midline as we come into another version of cow face. So the thighs are pressing in towards each other. Keep your feet as wide as you can, move them away from each other. And then either interlace your hands around the back of your thighs and give the legs a squeeze in, or you might have the ability, the space to reach forwards, to grab your feet, and then sink your shoulders back down onto the floor, thinking of pulling your feet with you and really getting into those outer hips. If this feels too intense or the feet are too far away to reach, then just stay with the interlaced hands around the thighs, squeezing them in as you push your feet away from each other. If, sorry, I think the sound just dropped out. Things are going extremely well for me today, but well done if you managed to stay in the stretch and not notice anything. Keep those shoulders pinned against the mat and that right knee to stay moving away from you. If 
And then with this same leg in the sky, send the top leg, cross it a little bit deeper over. So you've really squished the thighs together, the knees are stacked towards each other in the center. Either staying here, keep your feet nice and wide, take the hands around the back of the thighs and squeeze inwards. Alternatively, a bit more advanced would be to find your feet with your hands and sink your shoulders down against the mat. Thighs are rolling in towards each other. Focus on a nice steady breath. And then last one here, breathing in. As you breathe out, release those legs, untangle, step your feet back onto the mat, and then one leg at a time, release them out onto the floor. Let your arms come alongside your body just the way that we started. The shoulder blades can lightly tuck underneath. And just allow yourself to come back to that melting feeling. The body is loose, the muscles are soft. Letting your eyes close. As you just feel everything start to slow, to soften and to release. Take a nice deep breath in, reawakening the body, finding some movements in the fingers and the toes, and then drawing your knees in towards your chest to give yourself a little squeeze, a little hug, and gently find your way back to a comfortable seated shape, sitting yourself nice and tall, find that lightness through the chest. And then with your final breath in, circle the arms wide into the sky. And your final breath out, hands towards the belly, chin towards the chest. Namaste. Well done, you guys. Um, apologies for whatever uh, little technical issues I think I had there. I feel like it was maybe my time. We've not had many um, in my previous classes. And I feel like Benny was having a, a right little adventure this evening. Um, uh, do let me know if you had any particular issues that I can try to resolve for next time, um, but hopefully it all worked fine. Um, as always, I've got my Sunday morning class at 9.30 and my Monday evening class at 7.30 that I'd love for you to join me at. Um, but if you could like the video, that would really help me out. And if you haven't subscribed, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that would really help me out too. Have a lovely evening.